I see what you did there, CBC. Hey, everyone. This is an opinion piece out of CBC today, and it's in reference to the Charlottesville, Virginia, and all what's going on down there, right, with the white nationalist group, or the supposedly far-righters that they're talking about, and the subsequent violence, and, you know, the car that uh, rammed into the crowd down there. But here's the point, and I mean pay particular attention to the dialogue, right? The narrative that's put and presented by Miss Robin Urbach, which apparently Robin, hey, you know, <laughs> this is the information age, right? You seem to know all, all kinds of stuff about the Nazis and the regimes and, and the kind of uh, deaths and murder that happen under that kind of uh, national socialist regime. You seem to be able to point out how terrible that was. And I'm on your side as far as that goes. But the fact that people like Robin here and a lot of people left just want to close their eyes and plug their ears to the fact that, wait a minute, yes, Nazis, bad fucking people, national socialists. I'm totally against socialism of any kind. But communists under, you know, Mao, Stalin, right? The communist regimes, the murders and the deaths that happened you know, during World War II, under Nazism, right, under National Socialism, pales in comparison when you're talking about numbers in regards to the communist regimes under Mao, Stalin, or Lenin, right? So, you know, this is the part that the left, and they always seem to want to leave that out. And is it done on purpose? Oh, you better fucking believe it's done on purpose. But let me get into this article, because we've got a lot to cover. This is probably going to be, I'll let you know right now, this is probably going to be a fairly long video. It might even go 20 minutes, a half hour. But this is something that is of paramount importance that we start to discern and disseminate the differences and and try to uh negate this kind of propaganda that's put forth right because it's always about pointing to one side of the political aisle and forgetting all the nastiness all the viciousness all the hypocrisy or all the skeletons that are hiding in the closet that the left never want to open that door right opinion there is no moral equivalency when it comes to Nazi white supremacy. Robin Erbeck. Normally, this lazy whataboutism wouldn't merit a response, but we are not in normal times. And no, we're not. And just like then, as it is now, at least you will see that there are some people that aren't trying to choose sides or run to their political corners their perspective, ideological corners, and just, you know, choose sides and wait for the battles to begin. Wait for the Civil War or maybe full-on global wars to begin. There are those of us like myself that are saying, hey, 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 hey. Stay in the center. Stay as completely objective as humanly possible. Put your biases aside and just make sure you do what's right and say what's right in this time in this necessary time when you're seeing this kind of shit put forth and presented by your opinion makers. The whataboutism was strong in the aftermath of the white nationalist rally in Charlottesville, Virginia that left three people dead and dozens more injured after one young neo-Nazi inspired by ISIS tactics, I guess, decided to ram his car into a crowd of counter-protesters before trying to sneak away from the scene like a coward. Just listen to the rhetoric, like I say. And I see, like I said, CBC, they, they chose to allow an opinion piece to put forth this narrative dialogue so they don't have to personally be held responsible for their editorial board. Like I say, these yeah, they, they got lawyers that tell them, no, this is the way you should do it. Yeah, yeah. No, no, this is the way you can kind of stay a little bit, pretend you're a little above the fray, but still kind of get your narrative, your dialogue out there to the people, right? Recognize and realize. Informed America was incensed that President Donald Trump in the immediate aftermath failed to perform what should be one of the easiest, most uncontroversial duties of any presidency to immediately call out white supremacists and neo-Nazis in brackets, which I will mostly use interchangeably, as I'd argue there isn't much of a difference. Really? Hmm. As traitors to country, as antithetical to the values that the U.S. holds dear, which, by the way, I guess she forgets the fact that, you know, those white 
nationalists were the very people that created the United States of America. You know, they were all white and they created the United States of America. Very much nationalist. But Robin just wants to skip by that reality, right? What a fucking failure already. Instead, Trump condemned hatred, bigotry, and violence on many sides. Oh, how dare he say that, you know, it's not just one side that's per perpetrating this kind of bullshit, right? Black Lives Matter. I mean, I you just, just take two seconds. As a matter of fact, I'll probably post some in this video. Black Lives Matter, right? Oh, no violence ever happened by those groups, huh? Or Antifa. Punch a fucking Nazi when a guy's just giving an interview, not doing anything, not inciting or creating any violence, but just boom, round on the side and punch him in the face. But yeah, oh, let's just prevent, pretend none of that shit's ever happened, right? And let's just prevent the fact that the, chronologically how this is playing out, that it was Black Lives Matter first, that it was Antifa, and now all of a sudden these neo-Nazis, hmm, cause and effect. You, know, you don't just recognize that correlation, Robin? No? No? A little, little, little too ignorant, a little too biased to recognize that shit? Hmm? Right. As if many sides drove that car into a crowd of people and many sides convened to march through the University of Virginia campus shouting Nazi, rallying cries such as blood and soil and Jews will not replace us. First of all, how many people were driving that car? Huh? So you could, once again, look at how she is collectivizing. So the person that drove the car, and we're all against whoever drove the car and caused death and pain and destruction in that manner and so much, so many injuries. Who wouldn't be against that? But you see how, see how they could just paint with a broad brush? See how Robin's doing that? Right? See the hypocrisy already? I hope you are. Trump's failure to name this distinct form of hatred was an omission so grievous that it actually compelled a group of Republicans to emerge from their festering cesspool of partisan loyalty to urge the president to call evil by its name. In the words of Colorado Senator Cory Gardner, in brackets, Trump relented two days later and called out the group by name. So apparently, even under pressure, Trump apparently even chose to get all political on that side but they'll still fucking throw them under the bus you know they will and they're showing a heck caption in a tweet mr president we must call evil by its name there were white supremacists and this was domestic terrorism cory gardner nevertheless trump had his loyal er defenders supported by a group of unyielding contrarians right-wing rabble rousers and neo-nazis who demanded the public reserve some of its scorn for those other groups supposedly causing trouble over the weekend, Antifa and Black Lives Matter, BLM. What about them, they ask, incensed by this apparent double standard. Not apparent. Truth. Truth, Robin. In normal times, this intellectually lazy attempt at deflection would not be dignified with a response. But we are not in normal times. Oh, we sure are not. The White House chief strategist is a darling of the white nationalist movement. The president is winning praise from prominent white supremacists and neo-Nazis have adopted a 21st century uniform of khaki pants and citronella torches, in brackets. The only greater enemy to the white purity movement that, than blacks and Jews is mosquitoes. I take it. Ah, uh -huh, you're funny, Robin. Huh? And are marching openly by the thousands bearing swastikas, militia uniforms, and paraphernalia celebrating the apparent wisdom of Adolf Hitler. I don't know if anyone's references. I haven't seen anything about anyone referencing Adolf Hitler so far. But hey, once again, you're proven, Robin. Your your own rhetoric, your own words are pointing you. Seems so. This has happened after, right? After Black Lives Matter, after Antifa, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Once again, cause and effect. Cause and effect. Cause and effect. I want you to forget about that stuff. Pay attention now. You might actually learn something. To be sure, Nazis and their sympathizers have been around for decades, both before the Second World War and after. But the fact that they are gathering now in such large numbers without even bothering to cover their faces and many with their belief that the President of the United States is on their side makes this period entirely unprecedented. So what you're saying is, what, it's much better if they were like the Antifa bunch, right? covering their faces and committing their violence and crimes, smashing windows, burning cars, all that stuff. You know, the, the, the countless videos where you, anyone can see that. That's 
You forget that stuff, do you, Robin? But so what? They should be covering their faces. Would you, would you respect that more? Right, right. Is that what you're suggesting here? They should be hiding their identity. I don't know. Neo Nazis are supposed to be on the fringe. Instead, we have the presence allies attempting to de to deflect public attention from the distinct, unrivaled evilness that is white supremacy and neo nazism okay i was kind of going to wait till a little bit later into this article to point out the fact but i'm just going to give you a little preface now because like i said there's still lots of this video yet to go but hmm nazis killed how many people go hey the numbers are out there the information is there for all to find out just hey whether you even want to use google Duck, duck, go, bing. There's all kind of search engines. Use them to your advantage and you'll find out. What regimes were responsible for more deaths in the 20th century? Nazism, fascism, or socialism and communism, right? Was it Mao and how things happened and how things played out in China and how many deaths occurred under the communist regime in China or under Stalin or Lenin and the tens and tens of millions of some say maybe upwards of a hundred fucking million people right with when you take communism in its totality it like I said the people that died and not suggesting that I'm trying to limit or make light of the fact that you know maybe 10 15 who knows how many million people died as a result of nationalism national socialism but global socialism communism obviously had a much much wider range and a much bigger net to cast that has caused the death of way more people that's just an undeniable statistical and historical fact that people like Raman don't want to own up to they don't even want you to think about that but luckily, like I say, we live in the information age. Robin seems to think that everyone is too stupid or so unthinking or so biased that they won't even take a few seconds other time saying, geez, I wonder if Bennett's right. Or I wonder if other people that's putting forth the kind of narrative that Ben's putting forth, I wonder if they're right in any way. The ones that do, they'll be like, ah, shit, Robin is lying to us. Damn it. And Bennett's being truthful. Yes, other groups have committed acts of violence, and no, that should not be tolerated. But, and I can't believe I actually have to say this, there is no moral equivalency, equivalency between neo-Nazis and groups like Black Lives Matter and Antifa. You got it all backwards. So far, at this stage of the game, you know, there's been a few people that have injured, but like I said, go through and just do, do those numbers, right? See how many people have suffered or store owners or just people walk down the street or white people that have had suffered violence you know from people in the black lives matter movement or people in the antifa movement see how much death and devast devastation destruction and violence has occurred under just those two groups alone right and you'll see that actually yeah the numbers are skewed much heavier more heavily at this point anyways to the violence being perpetrated by Antifa and Black Lives Matter is is way more than so far from this. And it was just one dude in a car from what we know. And one incident so far that's reached national uh, attention. The legacy factor is one obvious reason. Neo-Nazis are associating themselves with a group that was and still should be America's enemy responsible for the extermination of millions of innocent people. The U.S. literally fought a war against these people, and now disgruntled undergrads with no understanding of history are buying backyard torches at the local Home Depot because they're feeling a bit hard done by. So let me now, just in case you don't want to listen to just what my opinion is, right, or take the time out yourself to look through the historical facts or precedent that, you know, world global socialists communists are every bit as violent every bit as oppressive every bit as authoritarian as any nazis ever could be now you know it might have taken a lot more of them to compete on the kind of level that the neo-nazis were but that once again that would have been the kind of people that choose to be nazis and communists yes some are much more stronger than others so you might need less 
amount of them in totality to create just as much death and destru destruction. But that's just a competitive aspect of this kind of shit, right? That has nothing to do with intent or how vicious or how vile or how violent they can be. Now, this here is a video from Prager University comparing some of the aspects of communism and Nazism. Listen closely and attentively. When people describe particularly evil individuals or regimes, why is it that they use the terms Nazi or fascist, but almost never communist? Given the unparalleled amount of human suffering communists have caused, why is communist so much less a term of revulsion than Nazi? Communists killed 70 million people in China, more than 20 million people in the Soviet Union, not including about 5 million Ukrainians, and almost one out of every three Cambodians. And communists enslaved entire nations in Russia, Vietnam, China, Eastern Europe, North Korea, Cuba, and much of Central Asia. They ruined the lives of well over a billion people. So why doesn't communism have the same terrible reputation as Nazism? Reason number one, there is, simply put, widespread ignorance of the communist record. Whereas both right and left loathe Nazism and teach its evil history, the left, and I'm talking about the, the left, not traditional liberals, like Harry Truman or John F. Kennedy, has never loathed communism. And since the left dominates academia, almost no one teaches communism's evil history. Reason number two, the Nazis carried out the Holocaust. Nothing matches the Holocaust for pure evil. The rounding up of virtually every Jewish man, woman, child, and baby on the European continent and sending them to die is unprecedented and unparalleled. The communists killed far more people than the Nazis, but never matched the Holocaust in the systemization of genocide. The uniqueness of the Holocaust and the enormous attention rightly paid to it have helped ensure that Nazism has a worse name than communism. Reason number three, communism is based on nice sounding theories. Nazism isn't, it's based on heinous sounding theories. Intellectuals in general, including of course the intellectuals who write history, are seduced by words, so much so that they deem actions as less significant than words. For that reason, they haven't focused nearly as much attention on the horrific actions of communists as they have on the horrific actions of the Nazis. They dismiss the evils of communists as perversions of true communism, but they regard Nazi atrocities correctly as the logical and inevitable results of Nazism. Reason number four, Germans have thoroughly exposed the evils of Nazism, have taken responsibility for them, and have attempted to atone for them. Russians have not done anything similar regarding Lenin's or Stalin's horrors. To the contrary, Lenin, the father of Soviet communism, is still widely venerated in Russia. And as regards Stalin, as University of London Russian historian Donald Rayfield puts it, quote, people still deny, by assertion or implication, Stalin's Holocaust, unquote. Even less so as China exposed the greatest mass murderer and enslaver of them all, Mao Zedong. Mao remains revered in China. Every Chinese currency note has his picture on it. Until Russia and China and Vietnam and Cuba and North Korea acknowledge the evils their countries committed under communism, communism's evils will remain less known than the evils of the German state under Hitler. Reason number five. Communists murdered mostly their own people. The Nazis, on the other hand, killed very few fellow Germans. World opinion, that largely meaningless and amoral term, deems the murder of members of one's own group far less noteworthy than the murder of outsiders. That's why, for example, blacks killing millions of fellow blacks in Africa elicits almost no attention from world opinion. And reason number six. In the view of the left, the last good war was World War II, the war against German Nazism and Japanese fascism. The left does not regard wars against communist regimes as good wars. For example, the American war against Vietnamese communism is regarded as immoral 
and the war against Korean communism and its Chinese communist backers is simply ignored. Until the left and all the institutions influenced by the left acknowledge how evil communism has been, we will continue to live in a morally confused world. In the meantime, all good people owe it to the victims of communism to learn what happened to them. Even worse than being murdered or enslaved is a world that doesn't even know that you were. So there you go. Without me have to present my own particular narrative or dialogue, and like I said, it's not just me. You can just look out there. The information is freely available to people. This is the information. We live in the information age, okay? So all this stuff, all this historical, fa all these historical facts, they're out there. And freely available for the most part. But as you're seeing, you get people like Robin here that pick a particular side, a particular ideology, and they will lambaste, expose which people like myself or people like Dennis Prager here are more than willing to accept the fact that Nazism national socialism is terrible collectivism you know the the fact that any regime has any concept or premise that you can sacrifice people individuals for the sake of the greater good because we all know that's that's mob rule that's majority rule that is your literal lynch mobs right how dare you go against us, right? That's not live, let live. That's completely authoritarian nature. So while I and Dennis and lots of people like us that are much more objective and are much more open to understanding historical precedents without having uh, conscious political biases obscuring our views and keeping us with that tunnel vision mentality, we will always recognize and realize that yes, national socialism is terrible. No one wants to go there and I sure as shit don't support it. But I also recognize that global socialism or communism is every bit as much of a vile, evil, despicable ideology. It too presents that very same narrative that, that you should be able to subjugate and basically eliminate the individual or anyone that opposes that particular ideology and it's all under the pre premise of some kind of altruism for the greater good. Which, what does the greater good even mean? As we all know, that's a completely baseless assumption. It's a completely base, baseless premise because there's no such thing as a greater good because there's people that are good, bad, and everywhere in between. So I just, I'm going to tie this video up. I'm almost getting to a half hour now, but I just wanted to point out, not just to Robin, but to any of the ones that's going to watch this video and anyone that actually wants to be educated and informed properly, that yes, be against nationalism or national socialism, but you also have to be against global socialism or communism or whatever particular new word they use to describe their collective ideology. Progressivism, that's another one. Any premise any ideology that sacrifices the individual for the greater good is always going to be a terrible scenario where a lot of people will suffer some death, pain, devastation, and destruction at the hands of the lynch bomb. So no, it's not just the alt-righters. No, it's not just the communists. It's all of those that don't want to respect the individual and to allow, you know, disseminating opinions or people to live in a particular geogra geographical landmass that may be not aligned with a particularly dominant ideology, right? If you respect minorities, the individual is the greatest minority on the planet. That's why I'm a libertarian. Because a libertarian doesn't fall for any of this bullshit ideology. Doesn't fall for the divide and conquer. Or at least a philosophical libertarian. Some political libertarians are actually those who do go into the realm of politics, they are the very ones that do sell out their purest principles. And they probably have good intentions too, but look at how it always plays out. If you do gain power, even if libertarians that seek out political power, if they do gain a position of so-called authority, they're still going to use that platform as a means to enforce or impose their particular ide ideology or preferences or opinions on everyone else. A true libertarian 
you know, a critical thinker, someone that has that live, let live mentality, what moral, legal, and ethical premises are all about and are willing to adhere them wholly. We make no exceptions to the rule. We hold each other to account properly. That's what a principle is. It's a Canadian libertarian, and I love liberty.